Dr. William Venley is the Secretary General of Religions for Peace, which is uh, one of the most, it is the most uh, high level, dynamic, interfaith dialogue organization in the world. There isn't any organization that does as much to bring the world's religious leaders together to cooperate as his organization. Dr. Venley. Thank you very much uh, for your introduction. Uh, Archbishop Ayuza and, and you, uh, Jonathan, uh, distinguished panelists, uh, excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, it's my pleasure uh, to share with you this afternoon uh, the ever-growing multi-religious consensus on the need for a step-by-step -step total nuclear disarmament. Uh, this is growing across the world in the religious communities. Uh, this growing multi-religious consensus is built upon a very deep respect for the fact that religions are different. Therefore, it's not a theological consensus. Rather, it's a moral consensus. And at bottom, it expresses the growing global solidarity rooted in care for human dignity and care for our common good. Each religious heritage makes its own distinctive religious arguments on the imperative, first of all, to build peace and against the use and possession of nuclear weapons. At the same time, many forms of moral argumentation revolve around the reality of self-contradiction. Basically, we use our intelligence, our wills, and industry to advance human knowledge and human flourishing, and what we like to call our common good. Are we then to use our intelligence, wills, and industry against themselves? Is this not a massive self-contradiction in which we subvert ourselves by undercutting the very conditions of possibility of our own existence. Do we, others have echoed this, do we have the right to impose collective suicide? Do we have the right to impose even the slow cancerous suicide of the contradiction of deterrence that eats away at the conditions of possibility for our humanity? Are we to numb our moral sensibilities, subvert our intelligence, and hijack our industry so that we can accept the grossly abnormal as normal? Are we to trick ourselves to try to do that? Not only explicit religious teachings, but I would also argue intellectual and moral coherence demands that we reject this path of self-contradiction. And Bishop Swing, I would add, uh, in light of your very moving reflection, that this is true at the level of our deepest feelings, and that we contradict our deepest emotional in touchness with reality, and it's true at the level of aesthetics, of beauty. We blunt our openness to the beauty of existence when we contradict ourselves so uh, profoundly. Finally, I would like to underline a point made in the Vatican December 2014 message to His Excellency, Mr. Sebastian Kurtz, Minister of the Republic of Austria and President of the Conference on Humanitarian Impact of Nuclear Weapons. In that message, we can read, and I quote, a global ethic is needed. A global ethic is needed if we are to reduce the nuclear threat and work towards nuclear disarmament, end of quote. That point is further amplified in the Holy See's submission, Nuclear Disarmament, Time for Abolition, presented originally in Vienna in December 2014. There we read, and I quote again, what is needed is a constructive ethics rooted in a deeper vision of peace, an ethics in which means and ends coincide more closely, where the positive components of peace inform and limit the use of force. 
It's a profound point that is being argued and one I think deeply resonant uh, in all the religious traditions. The Vatican is arguing as I read it that uh, an emphasis on the positive dimensions of peace provide an essential framework for the imperative for nuclear disarmament. And I would further argue from very uh, detailed experience that this is widely shared among the world's di diverse religious traditions. In 2013, 700 religious leaders gathered in Vienna, Austria for the Ninth World Assembly of Religions for Peace, the organization I represent. Together, they advanced a notion of shared well-being that included the notion of shared security. Yes, we need state security because the integrity of borders must be respected, but that is not enough. Yes, we need human security because the well-being of people within borders must be honored, but that too is not enough. Today, we need to advance and implement shared security rooted in our shared well-being. Stated in practical, if somewhat negative terms, we are no more secure than the most vulnerable among us. And certainly with regard to nu nuclear weapons, that is true, because we are all under the threat of nuclear weapons. Stated in positive and morally normative terms, we are obliged Indeed, we truly live when we are in relationship with, cooperating with, and in caring solidarity with the other. These positive dimensions of peace can provide to all of us the ground for a global solidarity in shared ethics that can build the trust essential for total disarmament. Is this possible? Religions, each in their own way, would give us the strength to say yes. Thank you very much.